Hello there, this is the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and in this video we're going to talk about Japan, the pressure already existed, and about how beautiful this war looks like. Okay, I remind you that English is not my first language, English is not my second language, and I'm here with no teleprompter, no guidelines, no master edition, recording everything from my cell phone and I speak like this a little bit slow so I cannot lose my train of thought. Okay, so I remind you that basically this is a Spanish speaking YouTube channel but you can look for English videos in my ENG playlist where I will talk about all the teams that will participate in the Russia 2018 World Cup. Okay, so let's talk about Japan. Why we say here that pressure already existed? Because Japan it has been using a defensive system based in the pressure for maybe 20 years or more. And some coach now have that style that like Bielsa or Sampaoli or Julian uh, Nasalman, Nasalhan, I, I don't know how to pronounce, this is the German coach, I don't know about the pronunciation, uh, but uh, the pressure defensive style already existed with Japan previously. Okay, and they still use it in some way. Okay, so let's talk first about how Japan reached the World Cup because I think this is important. I think or we think here that Japan shouldn't be in the World Cup. Why? Because they got uh, an unfair advantage for some uh, referee situations. Okay, and Japan was the first in his group with 20 points. Then the second team got 19 points. And then Australia was third with 19 points and they had to play uh, the playoff match against Honduras. Okay, so basically Japan stole Honduras place in the World Cup. And I'm gonna explain how this happened. So it was three things in three matches that happened with Japan. In one match, it's true, they lost unfairly one point because it, they score a goal, the goal, the ball, Cross the line, okay, but the referee didn't notice the situation and they lost this match. But this match, it should be tied. So, uh, they should have one extra point. So you will tell me, oh, they should have 21. Oh, no, 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 wait a second. I haven't finished. So in another match, Japan they got a penalty kick in their favor that it was not a penalty kick, okay? The ball bounced in the chest of some defender and they won that match because of that penalty kick. They got three points, they got, they got three points, but they should get only one, so they should have two points less. And in another match, they score a goal in an offside position. But in an offside position that it was very, very obvious. Okay, so the other team tried to complain during the match about this, but the referee validated the goal anyways. So they received three points that they should have received. 
So then Japan in reality, Japan, they only did 17 points. So Australia should qualify directly and Japan should play against Honduras. I don't think they should they will be, beat them. So I think Honduras will uh, should be in the World Cup and not them just because of this. That's why uh, we need technology in football. We need technology in football soccer because of situations like this. Okay, United States also got out, uh, didn't qualify because a goal that didn't exist in another match. Okay, so this is a situation that is going on, uh, especially now that we have the technology for this. And if we have the technology, we have to use it. But this is like always, it's suspicious. You don't know because it's FIFA, okay? It's suspicious because maybe they, they did this in purpose. Okay, maybe the confederation did this in purpose so they can send a stronger team to the playoff and make sure to grab that spot. Because I think if Japan will play against Honduras, they couldn't make it, not with this team, okay? This team shouldn't be, should not be in the World Cup Russia 2018, definitely not. It's not the best Japan. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this team, okay? Here we have uh, the goalkeeper, uh, Kawashima. Kawashima has a particular style that it reminds me a little bit of Oliver Kahn, the German goalkeeper, because he usually is gonna go far and he's gonna try to block the ball using only one hand. Okay, he also usually stay there, he doesn't go out so much. Okay, and he doesn't like to send the ball to the corner kick. Okay, he usually send the ball back to the field even in the in very difficult circumstances he still send the ball back to the to the field and he doesn't care if he put the defenders in a hurry okay so that's not that's not very smart of him <clears throat> but that's his that's his style okay this goalkeeper he plays better in the national is one of those players who plays better in their national team than in their club. Uh, this goalkeeper is reserved in his club. He doesn't even go to the bench. He's reserved. I mean, when his club is playing, he's not in the bench. He's sitting down at home watching TV. Okay? He's not even in the bench. What happened? The coach, he tried with other goalkeepers but basically the other goalkeepers what they do is that they try to copy their his style and they don't give security the team doesn't the team don't feel safe with any of them so the coach had to call him again and put him in the starters okay which is a very curious situation then we have here uh, Nagatomo Nagatomo plays for Inter de Milan maybe the best player of this team he has a very good projection okay he knows how to open a space to keep playing he's a very smart player maybe the smartest player of this team and he has a little bit of defensive, he has some defensive skills, of course, because he plays there. But his low point is that he has very bad or not so good cross or center passes. Okay, once he's there, he usually is going to try to give the, a pass back or a short pass to another player inside the box. Okay, but in center passes, 
he's bad considering the position he plays that usually this player has needs to have a very good center pass okay but he's anyways he's a good player that's why he plays in Inter de Milan then we have here uh, Shohi Shohi he has a very good uh, short pass to start the attacking after recovering the ball he's very focused on the game all the time and he has a very good uh, skills but gaining the position and that's his uh, best attribute as defender he tried to gain the position from their opponents and steal the ball okay then we have here uh, Yoshida Yoshida he has a little bit of aerial game but not so good uh, however he's tall okay but he's not as good at he should be in the aerial game okay and he has a very good sweep that's his main attribute Shohi he doesn't use sweep too much but for Yoshida uh, he has a very very good sweep okay and here here we have a uh, Sakai Sakai is very good at making center passes okay he's good at making center passes and he has a very particular way of defending where he used his body to displace uh, their, his opponents okay basically that's his style of playing then we have here uh, Yamaguchi Yamaguchi is a, defender, a defensive midfielder okay he has very good pressure very good pressure very good projection short pass and medium distance passes too and free kick okay then here we have a uh, Hasabe Hasabe is also a defensive midfielder okay he has good pressure he have some shooting from long distance okay and uh, he has a very uh, particular way of hitting the ball he's a little bit of acrobatic uh, he usually hit the ball with his head in a little bit of acrobatic way and this allow him to give the ball a little bit more of power than usual uh, head hitting with the with the ball okay then we have uh, Idaguchi Idaguchi have a good sense of location he has long pass and short pass and also he's one of those players who plays better for the national team than for his club okay then we have here Morioka Morioka in reality he is a organizer organizing midfielder but here in this team in the national team he plays there okay he has a very good shooting to score from the border from the outside border of the box okay he's very good at that and he has a very good definition when he's inside the box then we have here Asano Asano is at center but in this team he plays there okay he has a very good definition in first touch okay he doesn't need to keep the ball or something like that but he also is very good at opening some new spaces okay to take advantage of that and then here we have Osako Osako is a central striker he has a very good definition inside the box but he is not uh, he doesn't have good 
precision when he goes back to help the team in organizing. Okay, he has not good precision in making passes. So he better stay there most of the time. Okay, now how this team plays. How this team plays. This team, in reality, they don't play like this. Okay, they play either here or here. Okay, it's gonna be if the attacking comes this way or this way, but they usually are not going to be in the middle. Okay, they're gonna choose a side and this is where they're gonna be. Okay, they usually defend with four, five, one, when this one, this player stay there. And these three players, okay, let's remember that these two are defensive midfielders, but usually these three players are the ones in charge of the pressure. Okay, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, they use pressure in defending, but they don't do this pressure tactic during the 90 minutes. They do it randomly. Okay, sometimes they're gonna get attacked and four people is gonna go pressure. And other times they're gonna get attacked and only one player is gonna go there to take care of that. Okay, so they, they do this randomly. Uh, there is really not a pattern on this. They just do it sometimes and other times they don't do it. Okay, the other thing that happened with this team is that these two players, they rotate, okay, so they can dosify their, ener their energies. And also uh, this team, as I say, they pressure, they even pressure, they go pressure the goalkeeper. If they face a team who have a which have a goalkeeper that is good at passes, which is good playing with her feet, they're gonna go and they're gonna pressure that goalkeeper too, okay? That's also an important thing. Okay, so how this team plays in attack? This, plane, this team usually use the sides a lot, okay, and they attack in line okay they make a line like this and they try to go in this direction or they make a line here and they try to go in this direction in the attack okay and if they want to change to the other side they usually don't do long passes they usually don't try to organize here and go to the other side. No, they don't do that. Usually what they do is they come back and they start the organizing to the other side. Okay, sometimes if the other team allow them, yes, we, they can do the same closer. Okay, but usually they're gonna go all the way back and change the side. Okay, they have no shame on that. They don't care. They just will do it safely. Okay, so basically this is how they attack. The other thing that this team do very well is that they are very good at breaking, in breaking the opponent of line of side line okay they're very good at that they usually gonna keep in line with the opponent's defenders and then they're gonna try to break and take advantage 
of that. They're very good at that. They observe the other uh, defenders' movements, and they're gonna try to break that line. Okay, they're very efficient at doing this. Okay, now how, uh, well, the other thing that they do, as I mentioned, they attack in line, okay, where they organize very good here, and then suddenly they're gonna send the, goal, the ball to the middle and they're gonna try to score. Okay, they're gonna try to build something here or build something here, and suddenly they're gonna try to put the ball in and a score, so you have to be aware of this if you play against Japan. Okay, now, how do you beat this team? How do you beat this team? Okay, so one of the things that you should do against, uh, against Japan is to make them tire, usually, they receive the goals in the second half, okay? Second half. Usually they get the ball, the goal in the second half. Now, the other thing that you have to do is, as I mentioned, these three are always going to choose the side where the attack, the attacking is coming. Okay, they usually don't gonna stay in the middle. So what you have to do is try to make it look like you're gonna attack in one of the sides and then make your attack in the middle. Okay, this is the, the weak point. You need to make the attack in the middle, but then once you're here, if you have a clear chance to score, you may try it. But if not, what you have to do is, once you're there, is imagine that you are in the midfield. Okay? And you're going to keep organizing inside of their box. Okay, you are going to keep organizing because these three or two of them at least are going to go there to pressure you and the other defenders are going to be watching, okay? Or maybe one of them is going to be there, okay? But they're going to be defending like they are in the midfield, okay? So what you have to do is keep calm, not get anxious just because you are about to score. You have to keep organizing, okay? Once you get out of the midfielders, the pressure from the midfielders is gonna be hard for the defenders to do something when you do this when you do the organizing here. Also, they could, they could uh, make a foul and you can get a penalty kick. Okay, so basically, but basically, you have to attack them in this way, in the middle, and then try to organize inside the, inside the box until, until you get a clear chance to score. The other way to beat this team is to practice, okay, free kicks a lot because these two players are gonna be doing, making a lot of fouls outside, okay, in the midfield and you wanna have a lot of chances for free kick okay where you can build something or you can go free kick where you have a clear chance to score okay so that's all for this video if you like this video 
uh, please give me a thumbs up you can share this video and you also can subscribe if you haven't done yet so that way you won't miss my next video i remind you that uh, most of my video are in spanish but uh, you still can subscribe or you also can may you may wanna try to learn some spanish with me it says goodbye to you the bible of soccer thank you very much